crowd arrives near Ponderay Lake, Idaho to honor an elite group of aviators. The Women Air Force Service Pilots, or WASP for short, flew domestic non-combat missions during World War II. Their service was pivotal to the war effort. Now, some surviving WASPs are being honored in a special ceremony at the Bird Aviation Museum and Invention Center. It's a good location because everything's here. Dr. Forrest Bird and his wife Pamela operate the museum near Sagal, Idaho. Dr. Bird is a former aviator and the inventor of one of the first mass-produced medical respirators. The collections displayed here reveal the couple's many interests. It seemed a natural location for the WASP ceremony. When we start, uh, started to put this together, many people questioned our judgment. We're nine miles, so to speak, out of town and a long drive. How many would come out here? Well, really, it's well attended, and it's all word of mouth. I think it's a perfect fit because if they were pioneers, and you have pioneers in aviation, you have pioneers in innovation, and it's a specific type of a breed of people. Um, the creativity that comes about, the stamina. You know, the aviators, these pioneering women, they don't give up. During World War II, there was a shortage of male pilots. America's leading female pilot, Jacqueline Cochran, proposed that female pilots could be trained to fly stateside missions, allowing male pilots to fly combat duty. Eventually, Cochran convinced General Henry Hap Arnold and together they founded the Women Air Force Service Pilots Program and began receiving applications from pilots. I called Washington and, you know, we were very naive in those days. And how I knew to call and get hold of the Pentagon and Jacqueline Cochran, I'll never know how I had the nerve. But um, I talked to her and told her I wanted to be in the program. More than 25,000 women applied for the program. Just over 1,000 were accepted and completed the long, difficult training. The women were civilian pilots flying under direction from the military, all the while dealing with enormous cultural and gender bias. And I learned very early from Jacqueline Cochran that there were only two rules that she wanted to have without question that we would agree to. And one was you never tell anybody what you're doing. Second was, you never complain. I was born in Canada with, to American parents, and I did all my flying pre-WASP in Canada. I also was too young, and I was a quarter of an inch too short, but we overcame those things. because My parents were Americans, so I had every right to come down and do what I wanted to do. I just turned 21 and three ensigns that I knew had taken me, that I'd been dating, took me to Pearl Harbor Officers Club on Saturday night, December 6th. And they, I'd never had a drink in my life, so they bought me Southern Comfort and I had three or four of them. And they went down, they were smooth. And the next morning when the bombs started dropping at Pearl Harbor, I had such a hangover, I didn't care. I just put the pillow over my head. I, but I did go out and look and saw that they looked like T6s the zeros and they had orange suns under the wings and everything. So that was the beginning and then I saw a lot of black smoke where Pearl Harbor was and I went to work there three days later. The WASPs received the same training as male pilots, which could last up to 27 weeks. First they wouldn't give us military planes. They took civilian planes uh, and painted them olive drab and put the stars on the sides. And then after we flew a little while, two or three weeks, then they brought in, they decided we, the girls were going to be able to fly. So they brought in the military planes, like a T-6 here and everything, and we flew those and the military planes from then on. The WASPs flew in every type of military plane and mission, except combat. Missions included transportation of cargo and personnel, ferrying planes from one location to another, test piloting, and towing planes for target practice. <laughs> Not many WASPs volunteered for that job. And I didn't think that was a very good idea with people shooting at you. Students that might not have very good aim. Had some funny things happen, like I had a plane catch fire on me one night when in the air. Was able, I was up near Mayo Clinic up on my way to Great Falls, Montana. And there was a field, a landing field right near Mayo Clinic and I was able to get it on the ground and they pulled the cowling off and the whole engine was charred. 
I should have bailed out, but I didn't have the guts to. I was flying at about 23,000 feet, and it was an awful long way down to the ground, so, but I was lucky. The wasps flew over 60 million miles during World War II. 38 women lost their lives during missions. At the end of the war, the WASP program was quietly disbanded. Since the WASPs were civilians, they received no military honors or benefits and very few thank yous. In 1977, the WASPs were given veteran status and seven years later they received medals for their service. Today, in ceremonies around the U.S., the WASPs are being honored for their contributions during World War II. And hundreds of modern-day female pilots are following in the pioneering footsteps of the WASPs. I was an outstanding pilot. <laughs> I loved it, and I went on to fly after that. I was a corporate pilot. I flew the Powder Puff Derby. Uh, I can't tell you what a wonderful experience it's all been, and I thank you all for caring about us. If you have an idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSBS-TV. 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSBS Public Television.